All right, now we're going to do some order of magnitude calculations or estimations. First thing we're going to begin with is what is an order of magnitude? Well, let's say I had a number like, like 10,982 jelly beans. Okay. If you take this number and you put it in scientific notation, it becomes 1.0982 times 10 to the fourth jelly beans. That 4 tells us that the order of magnitude of jelly beans is to the fourth. In other words, if I were looking at just our class alone, the order of magnitude would be 1. If I were looking at uh, Alton, the order of magnitude would be around 4. If I were looking at uh, the school, the order of magnitude would be 3. And if I were looking at, uh, let's say, ah, juniors, the order of magnitude would be 2. In other words, what I just did in my head is I estimated roughly what the answer to this is and looked at the order of magnitude. So I estimated in a class there's roughly 30 kids. Even if it's 27, though, or 35, the order of magnitude is still going to be correct in one. Alton, I anticipated, plus Godfrey, let's go with about, I don't know, 60,000, somewhere around there. So the order of magnitude is four. The school is roughly 2,000, juniors 500, and hopefully you can see roughly where the order of magnitude is. Even if I'm slightly off on this uh, as far as accuracy, the order of magnitude st should still be pretty darn correct. So you might say, where might I use this? Well, let's say I had an equation like um, A plus, let's go, B times F over N. And I was punching numbers in here. Let's say for the purposes of this, let's go A is going to be 512. Uh, B is going to be 4. F is going to be uh, 9,261. And N is going to be uh, 90. Okay. First thing you're going to do is you're going to look at the uh, order of magnitude of each of your numbers. This is 2, 0, 3, and 1. Now I need to look at how to use exponents, of course, in a general formula. Most of you know this, but let's just remind you real quick. Okay, Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and we'll throw in here in a power, which we didn't address in class here in just a second. Okay, I know there's not one in this equation, but we'll use it here in just a second. All right. <clears throat> Addition and subtraction, which is what we start with right here, all you do is you look at the exponent of, and this is all we're going to highlight right here, is just the exponents. Ah, uh, don't know why that got so far off. Whatever. <clears throat> just the exponents here. So, A and B. When I add A, that's 512 or to the second, adding B, 4 to the zeroth. You'll notice just by looking at the actual numbers here that 4 would not affect the order of magnitude of A in the slightest. Unless it were like really, really close, and this is an estimation, so that's going to be a rare amount of time, so we're not going to worry about that. So whenever you deal with adding or subtracting, you find the highest exponent, and that's going to be your answer. So this whole thing here is going to be times 10 to the second. Now when multiplying or dividing, all you're going to do is again look at the exponents, but the exponents are going to add. So when I take 10 to the second here of this term, multiply by f, which is 10 to the third, the total should be 10 to the fifth. The bottom one here is 10 to the first. And in a opposite of multiplication, if you divide, you're going to subtract. So my final answer should be on the order of 10 to the fourth. And this is an estimation of what my final product could be. It's going to be, it might be slightly off, but let's actually check here on the calculator and see how we did. I had some stuff here from earlier. All right, so let's say the 512 plus 4. Okay, still order of second, like we said. Okay, multiplied by f, which is nine two six one. Okay, this is one two six. Now this is slightly off because we were close to nine thousand there, but let's see how it ends up at the very end because this is, like I said, an estimation divided by ninety. That ends up being ten to the fourth. How about that? Okay, so this allows you to know it's a look at your final answer on the calculator, and without having to re punch it in, were you pretty much correct? All right, let's look at another example here, real quick. So, quick question what happens if there's a power? Let's use the equation we had just a moment ago a plus b times f 
over n. Only major difference is we're going to take n to the second power. I think, and I'm going to estimate here because I can't remember, a was like 512, b was like 4, f was 9,000 and something. All right, and n was roughly 90. Okay, we've done this already, so I'm just going to skip the major stuff. This was 10 to the second, this was 10 to the third, the total was roughly 10 to the fifth, and the bottom was 10 to the first. When you have a power, what you're going to do is you're going to multiply the exponents. So my exponent within here is 10 to the first, and I take that to the second and multiply those two, so my answer should be 10 to the second. Such that if n was, it's not, but let's say n was like 900, that would be 10 to the second to the second power, which means my final answer would be 10 to the fourth. All right, that gives you a general idea of what's going on in estimations. If you need any more help on that, it is in your book as well, as well as I can help you after class. Now we're going to look at another example. Let's say I don't uh, know how many atoms there are in the universe. Now you might look at that and be like, that number is impossible to figure out. I was talking about this over the summer with a kid who said times 10, ah, if I can do it here, you know, 10 to the 99th is a huge number. So huge, in fact, that he wanted to know, because the reason this came up is that times 10 to the 100th is a Google. And he wanted to figure out, is there a Google of anything? So he tried to say, is there 10 to the 99th number of atoms in the entire universe? Well. That's a little bit complicated, but we can make some estimations order, uh, using order of magnitudes. For example, the Earth's mass, mass of Earth, is on the order of times 10 to the 23rd kilograms. Okay. Now, of course, it depends on what these kilograms are in fact made of, how many atoms are going to be in that. You did that with molar mass all sorts of last year. But let's assume uh, the very basic, let's just assume that it's all hydrogen. Not not right at all, but for the purpose right here, let's say that it is, okay? So what I can do then is I can say that one kilogram is going to be equal to, uh, using my molar mass thing here, you know, one kilogram is roughly equal to one mole. One mole can be then multiplied, one kilogram, one mole, one mole can be multiplied by Avogadro's number times 10 to the 23rd. Is that right? They're both 23rd? I think that's accurate. Huh. 6.20023 times 10 to the 23rd. Yep. So, in total, estimating, of course, the number of atoms here on Earth is times 10 to the 46, like we talked about a minute ago. I'm just multiplying there, so I add the two of them. All right? So, times 10 to the 46. Now you have to estimate in the entire universe, and this is where I get really fuzzy because I'm not familiar with it, is this, uh, is how many bodies of Earth are there out there in the universe? Well, they believe as of right now that there's around, uh, let's go with times 10 to the 32nd Earths on average. Not not say there's actual Earths out there, but roughly that much extra mass. Okay, so times 10 to the 46 atoms per Earth and if there's roughly that many Earths out there, we multiply those two numbers together, and we find out that the number of atoms in the universe is, just doing order of magnitude, around 78 atoms per universe. The point of that is to show you that we don't really need to look at the specific numbers. All we can do is highlight the order of magnitudes and estimate to come up with a decent answer. What number is over here in scientific notation? When it comes to that big of a number, who cares?